Welcome back to Kali Linux Penetration Testing. We're getting into Section 3, Server Testing. During this section, we're going to take a hard look into SQL injection testing. We'll attempt to deploy a JSP shell attack. We will then perform password cracking. We'll do a security scan. We will search for any outdated software. We will perform a DNS spoofing. And then we'll... We will then go on to a recon work with reconnaissance. In this video, testing SQL injections. Here we're going to use two different methods. SQL map is one of the methods we'll use to test for an SQL injection vulnerability. And then we'll use SQL ninja. That's what we're going to use to basically inject. If we have anything, we can double check SQL injection vulnerabilities and then use SQL ninja to throw an SQL injection at our server. Server hacking. The three steps we're going to take for this is exploit vulnerabilities. In that section, what we're going to need to do is find any of the server's weaknesses that we can use in order to infiltrate the server. We will crack passwords. If applicable, we may need to actually crack any passwords for the server. And then finally gaining access. So our target is weak and we found the password for an account. Now. Can we take control of our target, is a question. So let's just go ahead and close this down inside of our Kali machine. Let's close down Wireshark. Alrighty, so now we're back to Kali. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And the first thing we want to take a look at is SQL map. So let's type in this script, SQL map. Now what we want to do is we want to give the first argument the URL. So we do dash dash url http forward slash forward slash www dst repairs dot com then what we want to do is we want to sign a user agent so we do dash dash user dash agent equals sql map we want to set a batch mode so that we will basically test for almost all of the injection vulnerabilities after that we want to set the level 5 and then finally, we want to set the risk equals 3. Now with that, we've called our SQL map script that we've given it some arguments. First argument is, here's our target, which is the URL. The user agent we wanted to, to use is SQL map. So it's going to use SQL maps, SQL injections, in order to test it for vulnerabilities. We're using a level 5, which is the hardest levels that you can use. Uh, it goes from 1 to 5. And then we've got a risk factor of 1 to 3. 1 being low risk, 3 being high risk. And then finally, we want to test the DB system. So we do dash dash DBMS equals MYSQL. So we want to test to see if the website has a MySQL database. If it does, throw SQL injections at the MySQL database. Once you have that all set up, just press enter and let it run its course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop my SQL injection. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've seen this uh, a couple of times. The test shows that the user agent parameter user agent might not be injectable. The perimeter referrer doesn't seem to be injectable either. So I've seen a few different user agents are not injectable. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit this because apparently our website is not going to be injectable with MySQL. So what we're going to do here right now, we're going to go ahead and move on to SQL Ninja. So let's go ahead and clear this one. And the reason we're going ahead and move on to SQL Ninja, even though SQL Map indicated that it's not injectable, there might be one or two new things in SQL Ninja we could possibly use. Not for sure, but it is possible. So what we want to do is we want to type in SQL Ninja dash MT dash F. Let's just do MT. SQL Ninja MT. Okay, the reason why I want to do it this way is if you get this error, SQL Ninja dot CONF does not exist exiting. We have to create our own SQL Ninja dot CONF file. So let's go ahead and minimize this. What we're going to do is we're going to come over to Firefox. 
and we are going to look for SQL ninja.conf file. And usually you want to look for a GitHub setup. So like this one right here is GitHub. Let's go ahead and look at this one. See, this is one that we want to use. It looks like we have HTTP request, so we can get the HTTP request start. This looks good. So what I want to do is I want to view the raw data of this. I'm just going to highlight everything and copy that with Control A, Control C. Now I'm going to open up my text editor. I'm going to paste that all right in here. I'm going to scroll up here to the very top. And there's two things that I want to adjust in here. First one is get HTTPS and this right here. I want to change that to our website. So we do www.istrepairs.com. And then we're going to change the host from that domain name to www.istrepairs.com. Now, another thing that I want to do is our website is not secured. So we take that S out right there. We are good to go. Now, another thing that we can do is once we're done checking this specific SQL injection, what we can do is we'll learn how to search Google for our website to see if we have any other SQL injections that we can try to test for. But for right now, let's click on Save. I'm going to put this in my desktop. And I'm going to save this as SQL ninja.conf. Now let's save that and close out of this. Let's come back to our terminal, clear out of this. Now what we want to do, SQL ninja-mt-f, and the F is going to be the file location. So we're going to do the same thing for our password. Just drag and drop SQL ninja in here, and we'll be good to go. So what we want to do now is we want to press enter. Alrighty. So immediately we have check configuration things might not be working as expected. The server responded with 404 not found. Application is not vulnerable. There is an error in the configuration. We know there's not an error in that configuration because we just edited it. But we also have the application is not vulnerable. We also have the application is not vulnerable from SQL map. So one more thing we want to do is we want to come back over here to Firefox. And this time, we're going to go to Google.com. Now, the way we can check for website vulnerabilities is inside the search bar, www.istrepairs.com forward slash. So, what we're looking for is we are looking for the domain name.com forward slash, and we're looking for something very specific at the end of it. And it's going to have like a question mark ID equals whatever. So, if we go through here, and we can find anything that would represent a ID or anything of that sort, then we'll be good to go. Such as, here's an example of what we're looking for. Books, question mark, ID equals that. So we're looking for something very similar to that. Might be different. This, uh, uh, books might be different, but definitely our domain name would be different. So if we're sitting here searching through, searching through, searching through, we can't find anything. So obviously the website is not vulnerable and it has not had enough time to properly be on Google. So if we was to be able to find something, let's take as an example, let's take that books question ID, whatever it was. See if we can't find that again. So that was going to be right here. So if we was to copy this right here, highlight control C, then what we could do is we could come back to our SQL Ninja configuration file. And right here where it says check ID, we could actually replace that with, we could place this whole section, check ID equals one, and we put that books ID. Now we save that and we rerun that script. Then what we see is we have the same thing. And I knew that that specific configuration would not actually be a vulnerable because we don't have any books on our site. So what we could do is if we really wanted to try to find something out, another option we could take is we can come over here to this right here and we could do WordPress user ID. So if we just Google search something like that, then what we do is get user ID so we could possibly copy that go to our text editor we can grab this right here and we can copy and paste that in there now if we have our Kali our terminal opened up we don't really want to mess with that so let's just open up a new window so we do WP scan 
uh, equals URL www.istrepairs. What we're going to do here, we're going to enumerate the usernames all over again. And the reason we're going to do this is because if you're attacking another WordPress website, and I'm just using this one as a very quick example because it is my target, it's my website. So if we're using you know another website directory that is using, or we're hacking another website that is WordPress, we can see the ID is one and two. So I want to focus on two. So now let's come back over here to our text editor. And right here where it says ID, get user ID, we're just going to put question equals two. Now if we save that, close out of this. What we're going to do inside of the terminal is we're going to redo this SQL Ninja attack one more time. So if we can see now that the server is responding to the 404 not found. So there's that issue right there. Uh, check configuration, this might not be working as expected. The application is still not vulnerable, or there's an error in the configuration. What we can do is minimize this. Let's open up our SQL Ninja configuration. And let's just delete everything from down here. So what we're doing is we are taking everything from HTTP request in all the way down out. That way, all we have is just our HTTP request. So I want to grab, it ends right there. So I want to copy that. I'm going to take everything else out and I'm pasting that in. And then I'm going to save this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt this SQL Ninja one more time. And okay, so now I know my HTTP request is in fact working and it is set up. Injection was not possible because of application not vulnerable or an error in the configuration. So we also have a 404 error. So let's come over here and let's take a look at that 404. So we get get http www.istrepairs.com so that's working host istrepairs.com that's working what we can try to do here is take that out and then let's go ahead and save that and we'll throw it one more time we still have the 404 not found so this is telling me that my website is not vulnerable to sql injections